Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with an updated list of the uh, Look Out It's a Hellrider deck. Or whatever you want to call this silly deck. Anyway, I made some changes. I took out the Madcap skills because I thought the creatures were a little too vulnerable. I don't want to be two for one. I think that the between the just two of Spectral Flights in the main board, and I've added three of Volcanic Strength in the sideboard, that this is a good number of, of enchantments as I can go with. I would never, never want more than five, and I think I was using a total of six uh, with two madcaps, two spectral flights in the main board, and two volcanic strengths in the sideboard. So now it's it's two and three. I've added cyclonic rift because I think cyclonic rift, the way that I've been able to to hit land drops almost every turn with the card draw, makes it so that this cyclonic rift could be a kill late game. Uh, there's a there's a ton of other cards I could try like aetherize or even unsummon might be a little bit better. But I've added the Snapcaster Mages, so it's just a, a, a little more awkward. One more mana cost to actually basically be an Unsummon, and it can hit Planeswalkers, and it can hit Enchantments if I need to hit an Enchantment for whatever reason and whatnot. So I, I, I initially cut some Invisible Stalkers, but I put them back in as four of, because it does pair so well with this Tandem Lookout. I do like this Invisible Stalker. Still running the full package of four Searing Spears and four Pillar Flames. I guess we could use some like Essence Scatters. I haven't seen a lot of Caverns of Souls lately. So we could go Essence Scatters. We could go, what are some other usual suspects for the blue? Uh, Thought Scour, but Thought Scour, I, I don't like Thought Scour in this deck. I guess we could go Augur, but if I went Augur Bullis, I definitely want to cut the Spectral Flights and the Invisible Stalkers and go more uh, maybe Mizium Mortars or instances. Down to two Skull Cracks now, up to four Mizium Mortars because I really want to screw those creature decks over. I want this more like a tempo deck against the, the heavy creature decks. So back down the list real quick. Is it down to two? Is it Gil Gates? And I added two more mountains. So we have a total of four islands, four Silver Falls, four Steam Vents. We only need to hit a double island only one time for the dungeon, guys. We do need to hit double red more often, so I included a lot more mountains. And we definitely need to hit hit the reds in this because a, a second turn out sell it, of course, is necessary and whatnot. This is a card I could cut because I put in more Snapcasters, running the full the full full four Snapcaster Mages, as they do pair well with Tandem Lookout as well. Added Archwing Dragon instead of the Double Striker. Uh, it makes me sad that I have to get rid of Gristlebrand's Hound or whatever Hound of Gristlebrand. That's what it's called because I really do want that card to work. And I you know I just had. A great time hooking this up with a Spectre Flight, get a flying 4-4 Double Striker, but it's just something that can still be 2-for-1 quite easily. It is still pillar food. It, it's not the best. A 2-2 Double Striker is not the best for 4 mana. It's just a little too awkward to cast with the Double Red, and it, I just don't see it working out very well in this deck other than it can draw double cards off Tandem Lookout, but that's not that big of a deal, like I said. So back down to this list, I still like the Zisatacaster versus Junk or any other human deck. And I kind of want to put in Nightshade Peddlers, but yeah, not going to. I think this works out just fine. So we'll play a game here. We will go on to a tournament practice new game. Start the queue up and hopefully get a game here shortly. There's our opponent. So let's see what cards we are dealt this time. See if I can now get mana screwed now that I've been mana flooded for the last like six games. All right, we'll check out our hand here. Steam Vents, this is a fine hand. We can deal with anything for the longest time. We, it'll give us plenty of time to draw into lands here. Uh, let's see if he is zombies. No zombies, just leads with a black. I have not a clue what we're up against here. That's a great card to draw into. Steam Vents, could be mono black. I'm, I'm fine with that because I can kill off his uh, extort dude that makes his swamps double up. But did he just... No, he didn't miss a land drop. Okay, so... Let's see what he does here. Double Swamp. And a Sign of Blood. Okay, sure. Fills his hand back up. Yeah, that's a great draw. We will actually go ahead and play that Invisible Stalker. Have to worry about Mutilates in this deck. I need to draw into a land next turn, and then we can pair this Tandem Lookout to Invisible Stalker and then be in the driver's seat to win this game. Not worried about a Blood Artist. He misses land up. Let's go in. Oh, no land drop. So we could Searing Spear here. Yeah, we might as well do that. Get rid of this stupid Blood Artist before it starts gaining him insane life. And we'll attack in here with the Invisible Stalker. So we missed our land drop too, so we're even here on both of us missing our land drops. This would have been a sick hand if we would have hit our land, but that of course is asking too much to do so. 
see if he hits his land and puts out a messenger. Nope, another blood artist. And we don't worry. Yeah, definitely don't worry about that right now. Land? No land again. So I guess this is just gonna get old. Where's my pillars instead of searing spears? But again, uh, this is just just like we both just negated each other's turns here. I mean, like he did. I guess he did technically do two damage to me, but we both missed our land drops, so the board state didn't increase and our hands didn't get decreased. So we're, we're ba basically back to square one here. It looks like <laughs> he misses his land drop again. See, if we miss our... Wow, and we miss our land drop again. This is getting old. All right. <laughs> yep. So see if he drew four blood artists and I drew four searing spears. See if that's the case. So anyway, I mean, this would have been the sickest hand if we would have actually drawn into lands. Because uh, if, if we didn't pair that invisible stalker, man, then we could pair the tandem lookout. And I definitely don't know what I'm going to do if I do draw on a land. I think I just do play it safe and pair the invisible stalker to the tandem lookout. Again, no one draws a land. We're still stuck on two lands each. And, all right, I think we actually spear this guy instead of, yeah, instead of pillaring it, because a pillar can take care of a di uh, grave crawler instead. And <laughs> we're both still stuck on two. I'm weeding him down with this invisible stalker. So seven turns, I can't draw into a single land to start getting me card advantage. And, yeah, this is <laughs> silly game. So did he not hit a land either? I mean, he even he even uh, signed a blood to try to find another land too, and he he couldn't. So he cycled through a lot. Still no land. Four searing spears in the in the bin. Got the snapcasters to flash those back. I don't see him winning this, especially now that he has to discard. See if it's a, a, a doubt a messenger. Okay, so a blood gift demon. He's like a mono mono black beat deck. Yeah, this is getting ridiculous. Still not another land. This is our turn seven, so we've drawn seven cards and no land. I might just even Snapcaster Mage here. I think that's kind of pointless. Messenger's dead when he does draw, draw a land. I mean, I can always Snapcaster end of turn if I don't draw a land here, or just pillar him. Hey, there we go. We draw a land, and I am actually going to Tandem Lookout here. Parrot. I mean, he could have a Tribute to Hunger. And hopefully we can get a card here. All right. There's our other land. Now we're in very good shape as we can. Pillar, Snapcaster, Pillar, and Snapcaster, Searing Spear. So, fourth blood art is coming out? Nope, Sign of Bloods himself. See if he finds another land here. He does. All right. See if there's a tragic slip to kill off this tandem. Yep, dead weight. That's what I thought was going to come, but it did replace itself and get rid of a card. So very good trade there. I think we will just go ahead and Hellrider here. And swing in for f for six. Or, or for yeah, for six. Take him down to a seven. And go ahead and yield these. Pass the turn back to him. Good shape. He's still got seven cards in his hand. And see what comes out now. Got his other force. We both hit our fourth land drop now here. What can he cast? Vampire Night Hawk. Yeah, it's just going to get Snapcaster Mage tier. Actually, the better thing to do is just Dungeon Geist it. So I will. Dungeon Geist it. Tap down the Vampire Night Hawk. And swing in for six again. Oh, I guess I could have. Wow, that's a bad. I could have just Snapcaster, Snapcaster Pillar 1. Oh, no, I couldn't have. All right. So next turn, I can just pillar and win, though. So we'll just pass it back to him. Or, wait, did I put in that into play tapped? Is that what I did? Am I that bad of a player? I guess I am that bad of a player. He, he was dead with a pillar of flame. Doesn't matter. Okay, we'll go on to game number two. Do static casters come in? I do not believe so. They could. Mortars definitely come in. They kill the vampire nighthawks. Uh, Volcanic Shrink does not come in. Skullcrack does not come in. Cyclonic Rift, I believe, does not come in. I don't think we need to worry about Invisible Stalkers here. He does have a ton of removal, but I don't care about it. I'm not sure about, is it Static Casters? Spectral Flies can come out now that Invisible Stalker's out. So I'm going to bring in two Is It Static Casters. Call this good. 
All right, this is an acceptable hand. Again, we got the Pillar Flame to take care of any sort of shenanigans, and we actually do have action with Dash Zella and Mizium Mortars. So not going to mull this. Of course, hope to get that third land as we can pair it with Dash Zealot. And let's see if a Grave Crawler comes out. No Grave Crawler. And throw out the Steam Vents. See what's see what comes down next turn. Most likely just going to put the Ash Zilla out. It does die to a, a dead weight. But, I mean, I do have some options here. I could just pillar that off, but I'm not too worried about it. We're just going to get in here with the Ash Zilla and actually make him dead weighted if he has a dead weight. And uh, let's see if we can draw into a land again. <laughs> like I said, I, <laughs> I think I'm my own karma here as I got flooded last time and was bitching about getting flooded the last two matches. And now, now I'm getting stuck on two lands, so that's what I get for cursing the magic gods. Uh, victim, that's fine. And I lose a life here. That's fine. I said, Like I said, I have action next turn. I'll, I can pillar that blood artist off. Or if he does cast a, a grave crawl here, I can always pillar that off. I will, okay, yeah. I'm thinking I just will mortars. I'll save my pillar. So I'll just mortar that off. Spend my mana. You know, that's not even a big of a deal either, as we didn't have to use it, because Blood Artist isn't necessary in this match. It's something we can draw into a Static Caster and take care of. But I might as well just get out of the way and spend some mana here. Night Terrors. Eh, no matter what he takes here, it's not that big of a deal. It's a card for a card. I'm cool with that. I'm sure he'll take one of my removals. But either way, oh, it exiles, okay. So Pillar is probably the best card actually to take here as I can Pillar off a Gravecrawler or a Messenger. So it'd be surprising if he takes something besides the Pillar. He could take the Searing Spear, but Mizzy Mortis takes care of his Vampire Nighthawks. Dungeon, guys, I'm, I'm way cool with that. I'm, I can't even cast that for the longest time. Yeah, that's fine with me. Dungeon Geist... To your heart's content. We got our tandem lookout now. See if he tragic slips it. Too bad this guy doesn't have hex proof. Then he would have been awesome. <laughs> Let's see if Blood Gift Demon comes out. I'll just mortar him if that's the case. Yeah, you're getting mortared. I'm not going to let you stay out. So go ahead and mortar you. And tack in with the Tandem Lookout. Don't get a draw card because he's not paired. That kind of sucks, but yeah. We do get that Blood Gift Demon out of the way. Hopefully another one doesn't come out here, but we can Searing Spear Pillar it. And it still would be worth it. Six mana. So is it the five, five, Intimidate, whenever not, whenever other human on creatures die? Yeah, you're, you're dying. Getting rid of you as well. Okay, so Searing Spear and Pillar. He's down to one card. We need to get a, another card online so we can actually start car drawing some cards. Alright, Severs that guy. That's fine. We'll just cast another one. Actually, we'll just cast this. Yeah, we'll actually cast the, the Tandem Lookout. And that way, next turn, we can actually pair it to an Ash Zealot and draw two cards. What if Legion Loyalist might actually be a decent card in this? Is it is a 1-1 Haster that gives your guys trample. I just don't think 1-drops are the right call unless it is like a Delver-type card. All right, so he's able to flash back a Sever. That's fine. We'll do it again. Yep. <laughs> That's life, buddy. You got the answer? I'm drawing a card no matter what, because you're playing something here. I don't care if one of my guys dies. All right, severed it. Okay, maybe I do care. And he can actually flash back that sever, but he's out of cards now. <laughs> Where are my lands? Let's beat him down with this Ash Zealot. Yeah, you're going to take three, buddy, if you, if you flash back that sever. And eventually, I'm going to draw a land, right? So I've got 21 left in my deck, so a little under half. And he, he draws into a land. So I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to flashback a Sever here, but that takes three. 
And now he's looking pretty lethal here with um, Snapcaster Searing Spears. So that's five per turn. Not quite. And we, of course, we need to draw into a... There we go. I am actually going to have it come into play untapped, and we will end a turn Snapcaster Searing Spear or something. So he's a pretty heavy control deck, too. I kind of like his mono black list here. Blood Gift Demon is another card I've always wondered why, why it hasn't seen play. It just seems like a very powerful card. And did he, yeah, he actually showed me, well, when you're up to this many lands, I highly suggest just leaving it in your hand as it forces your opponent to actually play around. So, where are you, Searing Spear? Okay, and I'm actually going to Spear your face. All right, so down to eight. Hey, there's our lands now. We don't need them. So end of turn, I do believe I'm just going to snap Caster here. No, I'm just going to Searing Spear his face. And next turn he is dead. He does show me that he plays his land too. Oh, wow. I Was that? Okay, so I end up winning there. We'll play one more game. That wasn't the best of games. I'll tape one more game. We'll queue up here shortly. Mm -hmm.